Uh, I'm Kazuhito Tabata uh, from University of Tokyo. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, today, I will describe a special research project sponsored by Japan Cabinet Office. So first, I'd like to introduce IMPACT. Uh, IMPACT uh, is an initiative of Japan Cabinet Office. The project supports researchers with a high-risk, high-reward project. Uh, currently, IMPACT found uh, 16 program managers. The program manager of the project to, to which I am affiliated is uh, Hiroyuki Noji. <coughs> Our ultimate aim is the creation of the artificial cell using the micro reactor array here. The project can be broken into the three sub projects uh, in measure. Uh, we aim to enhance the uh, detectability uh, of a single molecule reaction, like ELISA, uh, through a new quantitative and Sorry. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Right. Oh, sorry. Sorry, and uh, high resolution technologies uh, in create. Uh, we aim to synthesize functional protein uh, by uh, directed evolution from single molecule DNA. Uh, finally, in proliferate, uh, we aim to reconstruct fundamental cellular function, uh, such as a cell, cell division and propagation uh, inside our reactors. Uh, today, my attention will be on the proliferate project. The work I will describe is managed by two people, uh, Masayuki Suetsugu and it's myself. Uh, Dr. Suetsugu worked the, uh, with uh, exponentially amplifying circular DNA, like a bacterial genome. He, he achieved this using the cell-free cloning system in which he reconstituted E. coli gen uh, genomic DNA replication system uh, in vitro. So my work involves uh, creation of the artificial cell uh, by fusing together uh, the content of bacteria and micro device. The first topic is here. So contemporary gene cloning method involves the uh, transformation of the plasmid and uh, culturing the cell. So this process normally uh, takes two to three days. Uh, moreover, uh, there are a number of biohazard includes. In our method, uh, we can extract required genome replication component and <coughs> uh, for E. coli. Uh, so furthermore, we develop a method that uh, combine the uh, uh, gene fragment assembly lead to the uh, cell-free cloning system. This approach reduces exposure uh, biohazards, uh, also because we demonstrated it using the E. coli genome replication system. Uh, we proved that it can handle the large DNA. So in this slide, I give an ex uh, explanation of the DNA replication and amplification using the, our in vitro system. Uh, we named this process uh, replication cycle reaction, RCR. The reaction involves the mi minimum component of the gene replication. And the <coughs> replication and amplification is achieved by the, uh, repeating the cycle of uh, duplication and amplification of circular DNA uh, with the uh, uh, Orishi region. Uh, here is a result of RCR experiment. Uh, this graph uh, shows the 10 kilobits or she plasmid amplified using RCR. So after 100 minutes, uh, 
uh, we see a single plasmid was amplified one billion times. Uh, the proto uh, is amplification uh, is because of a uh, limited substrate. Uh, to prove this, uh, we took part of the reaction solution and moved to uh, it, uh, a new reaction solution like this, uh, which lead to further amplification. Uh, finally, the error rate is very low. Uh, 1.4 uh, uh, 10 power minus 8 error per base per cycle. And here I show the amplification of the large DNA by RCR. Uh, it is possible to amplify DNA uh, 200 kilobase in size. So in the lab, uh, we have achieved 350 kilobase and are now working on the DNA megabase in size. Uh, in this slide, I put together our gene assembly method and RCR for in vitro cloning. Uh, first, 21 uh, DNA fragments uh, are ligated, and uh, then RCR is applied for the uh, amplification. The electrophoresis image confirmed the ligation product like this. Uh, to the right, uh, you can see the RCR amplification uh, product here. So we can see in vitro cloning was possible based on the uh, supercore DNA. Another point about RCR is that only circular DNA can be used as a substrate and that it can amplify many circular DNA molecules. <coughs> Therefore, even if the efficiency of the ligation reaction is low, uh, cloning can be uh, quite high. Uh, furthermore, uh, genes that normally cannot be cloned uh, can be cloned with uh, our in vitro system. <coughs> Ultimately, we expect in the uh, future to clone the entire genome of large bacteria DNA. Uh, if you think this system, uh, could you help your research uh, please know that we have uh, prepared an uh, in, uh, in vitro cloning kit. So this kit will be available free uh, for uh, this summer. Uh, please contact me uh, if you are interested. So next, I'd like to introduce my research. Uh, in this research, I fused together bacteria and a microreactor of the approximately equal volume to create the artificial cell. Uh, here is a photo of our micro uh, device. In, this, in the experiment, I introduced a bacterial genome and, uh, and, uh, uh, and for the repeat barrier is seeding with the leak. E. coli is integrated into the reactor by membrane fusion. The resulting hybrid cell, ha uh, hybrid cell uh, has an all component of the E. coli cell, uh, which the uh, lipid membrane contains the all membrane proteins. The hybrid cell show the evidence of the growing and dividing uh, mm -hmm. the ability to create a new bacteria. Uh, to observe uh, uh, the properties I mentioned in the uh, previous slide, uh, we investigated allied lipid barrier chamber uh, named the Arbic. So we introduced a fluorescent dye like this. If membrane barrier fails, uh, then the dye escapes from the chamber and no fluorescent signal is observed. But we can see, uh, we can clearly see fluorescence uh, confirming the membrane bilayer. Next, we confirmed that uh, bilayer membrane uh, had a proper function. Uh, this time, uh, we observed alpha hemorrhizing. Uh, we can evaluate alpha hemorrhizing function by diffusion of the uh, fluorescent dye. Uh, here, you can see the fluorescent signal decreasing with time, like this. Uh, based on this finding, uh, we confirm that our Arabic does not impair the membrane bilayer. 
In this slide, I describe uh, the uh, fusion between the E. coli and Arabic. I'd like to show you a video uh, of the fusion. Uh, in <coughs> e. coli have a GFP fluorescence. Uh, once fusion occurs, size of the uh, green light matches the size of the microchamber, like this. Uh, please take a look this and this and this E. coli. Again, moment a green light matches the size of the chamber, uh, we confirm the creation uh, of the uh, hybrid cell, uh, like this. <coughs> and uh, this graph uh, shows the uh, fluorescence intensity of the hybrid cell. Each point on the graph uh, represents a, sing uh, a single reactor. The x-axis axis is uh, uh, represents fluorescence the beginning of the experiment. The y-axis represents fluorescence three hour uh, three hour later. Uh, the uh, higher point, uh, <coughs> the more GFP was synthesized. Uh, you can see the chloramphenicol uh, uh, reduce the GFP expression. Uh, on the other hand, ATP only uh, had an effect on the GFP expression, but variance increased. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, restart. Uh, so, and, uh, so uh, in uh, this graph indicating that GFP was synthesized uh, some hybrid cell. Yep. Uh, in this slide, I describe the beta galactosidase expression in the hybrid cell. Uh, we introduce a beta galactosidase plasmid into the reactor. And, uh, and measured its expression by the observing the fluorogenic probe uh, spider. So this uh, movie showed a uh, change in spider fluorescence, uh, <coughs> which confirmed beta galactosidase expression in a hybrid cell. So the uh, fluorescence uh, it could also inform us uh, how many molecules of beta galactosidase were synthesized. Uh, we uh, found an average of 100 more months per hybrid cell. These results demonstrate a uh, central dogma applied to our hybrid cell. Uh, finally, uh, also there, uh, we found evidence that a hybrid cell could change its morphology and divide. Uh, hybrid cell can be seen uh, in the uh, center of this movie. Uh, you can see the division. And, uh, and here, uh, you see the hybrid cell elongate and engage with the reactor, like this. Uh, in this red circle, uh, you can see the growth like object. Like this, and here. Uh, finally, in this movie, uh, you can see the small particle in the uh, inside of the hybrid cell. Like a uh, broccoli. And these observations demonstrate E. coli regeneration in the micro device. Uh, to conclude, I'd like to summarize my uh, presentation. Uh, the most important point is the uh, in vitro cloning kit. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
Thanks, it was very interesting. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering about uh, the in vitro cloning kit um, and whether it could replace uh, like in vivo cloning. Um, so have you, have you shown that it, you could go to limiting dilution of, of single plasmids and get clonal uh, amplification of a, of a single plasmid? Yes. yes one I of the advantages of, of you know, in vivo cloning is that you get one plasmid per cell, right? Mm -hmm. And so is it hard to avoid single molecule contamination in that setting? Uh, <laughs> contamination is, uh, contamination is a, a problem, but so this uh, system uh, needs a uh, Olshi region. So uh, without Olshi region cannot uh, amplify. So if <laughs> Olshi region contaminated plasmid, uh, cont uh, have, uh, plasmid have Olshi region, uh, it's uh, amplified. Uh, but uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think it's difficult to uh, remove the uh, uh, contamination. In the case where you're using the cell with the bioreactor, yeah. your supply of ribosome, et cetera, is entirely coming from the host of its cell. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in volume? What's the difference in volume between the incoming E. coli cell and your bioreactor? Because you must be getting a big dilution, and it's yeah, it's yeah. surprising that you get as much expression yeah. and so on. And yeah. and that's obviously lim going to limit the ability to produce the hybrid cells that you yeah. want in the end. Yeah, very good question. So this uh, uh, my uh, bioreactor is very tiny, uh, uh, same as uh, 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 bacteria volume. So my, uh, in my case, so E. coli size is about three or four micrometer diameter, about uh, 20, uh, 40 uh, femtoliters. So my uh, device, about uh, 20 femtoliters, just uh, 1.5 dilution or something. Thank you.